Articuno, Radiant Greninja. Ooh, that's kind of rough yep. to be in the prices there. Lots of Pokemon. How about on Ian's side of the field? Yeah, the one boss's Pumpkin orders new. research, not too big a deal. Maybe that B-Guard energy can play a role in uh, sticking around an extra turn against the Palkia V-Star. So yeah. those things all worth noting. But that Radiant Greninja on, on Piper's side definitely sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah, definitely does. We'll see uh, what happens there. If that's going to be a big detriment to Piper's initial setup, potentially. But here we go, Kyle. We are jumping into our first match of day two. Of course, we are in our Swiss round 13. Ian Buck versus Piper Lapine. I am so excited for this one. I love watching Piper no play. No way. So I'm a little biased here, but oh my goodness. That's an Ultra Ball for two Archeops. That is how you play Pokemon, ladies and gents. Ian Buck starting off very strong there. Absolutely. Archaeops going straight to the discard pile there. I mean, that is that is a very powerful first move, I'm sure, <laughs> in Piper's position now. It's like, well, there's that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to I'm going to have to do everything in my power now. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But let's see what else is in the starting setup. Of course, Ian also looking through the deck here, checking the prize. What's in the prize cards? I'm sure looking at uh couple of cards there. We got that second Lugia V already down here on Ian's side yeah, as well. I guess that shows off a little bit of the strategy here for yeah. Ian, understanding that uh, maybe this Lugia V is a great attacker in the matchup. You can always work that in. If you're worried about paralysis, you can actually use Aero Dive to take some of these early knockouts mm -hmm. and then evolve into the Lugia V star. So we could see Ian maybe going for a strategy where you evolve the bench Lugia V star and yeah. uh, try to steal some early prize cards. Ooh, this is going to be a fun one, Kyle. I can feel it. All right, we're over here on Piper's side now after a pretty fantastic turn. There was no energy, energy attachment from Ian, but hey, uh, <laughs> you don't really need it when you have two Archeops <laughs> in the, the hand, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, here we go. On Piper's side of things, starting off with an Irda here. Um, and of course, Sobble to start as well. We're going to grab that Capacious Bucket, the item card off of there, but you also get to get a Pokemon as well. I think Piper already snagged the Pokemon and put yeah. it straight into the hand she there. found that Manaphy. Going to add that to the hand. Yep. And you can see that she already placed all three Sobbles onto the bottom. So keep calling. Likely going to be the end of the turn mm -hmm. here. Absolutely. And this is very traditional from what we see from these water decks. Uh, we don't see them too frequently nowadays, but uh, Piper Lapine piloting it so well here to a 9-2-1 record. Of course, that capacious bucket grab two energy right out of there, and then we're going to keep calling some Sobbles onto the bench. Yep, Sobble and the boys trying to get the job done here. Understandably <laughs> so, going to lose a couple of these guys along the way, and that's just due to the speed of the Lukia V-Star deck on the other side. Ian obviously looking to have a fantastic second turn here. When you see yeah. that Ultra Ball Ooh, and it hand, doesn't though? go for the Luminion, instead goes for that second Lugia, yeah. makes me feel like we're definitely going to see a supporter, and we do see that Professor's oh, research. Oh, perfect. Fantastic. That full art Professor's. What you want to see for sure. We're going to have a manual attachment first of that capture energy. So going straight back into the deck here for a basic Pokemon to the bench on Ian's side. But yeah, we're going to see a fresh seven cards this turn, which will be very nice to work with, especially uh, this okay. is just going to be the second turn for Ian. So pretty solid setup here. Of course, we saw that Raikou also come down from the hand, too. That's a bit scary. Yep. Uh, that's why the Manaphy was grabbed yeah. immediately, <laughs> immediately from Piper. <laughs> like, I am not letting you steal extra prize cards. <laughs> yeah, when Absolutely. we see the capture energy go for nothing, obviously Ian does see some great cards that he'd mm -hmm. like maybe later on the matchup. Stoutland V is one of those that really speaks to me, as you could maybe use a boss's orders on that Manaphy, clear it, grab two prizes, yeah. and then line up that Raikou. But that's something that Ian can always grab in the middle stages of the game. So definitely going to go with this slower approach, get the consistent early knockout here, and I'm curious to see board. which Pokemon is going to be evolved. Oh, uh, this is pretty wild. There's an evolution incense just to thin there. Grab another Archeops here, and then we're going to see the Ultra Ball here for that Lugia V-Star. Smart so man. That is just, yeah, some expert play, and oh my gosh, Kyle, those are some hot chickens on the field. <laughs> <Ba -gawk! laughs> that is what we're looking for here. In fact, one just flew the coop and uh, is <laughs> on the ground. It is on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Archeops popped out of the discard pile here off of that V-Star power that is now been used by Ian Buck and we're jumping straight into the deck for that primal turbo. This is what is going to be accelerating the energy onto the Pokemon here. 
on Ian Buck's side. So it's going to be two here onto that Lugia V. It's special energy, but you have to attach to one Pokemon in particular per Primal Turbo. Yeah, can you tell that Ian Buck is uh, primarily a player that works with Michael Pramalant? Because this is, uh. this is a flawless <laughs> opener here. Knows exactly how to play the matchup and I love yeah. seeing this opener. Just going to be able to take these early prize cards, not worried about paralysis mm -hmm. in the slightest. And Piper is going to have to get some work done early on. I'm curious how many turns it's going to take to eventually get off that first Articuno attack. Yeah, I am very curious to that as well, but we are going to see a lot of chaining here, some shady dealings going on. So, of course, Piper is going to go into the card, be able to, or sorry, into the deck, and be able to search out trainer cards, one per shady dealing. So, depending on how many Drizzile are in hand, at least that'll allow Piper to kind of line up the strategy here. So, checking out the deck here, but I mean, this is just one of those decks, I and mean, we, we saw this pretty much all last season throughout these water decks and the shady dealings some tough decisions you got to make. You can go into your deck and grab pretty much whatever you want off the trainer cards, but you also have to be making the correct decisions. So it's going to be the Raihan grab off of that, of course, triggered after a knock happens. So it is able to be used this turn. And then we're going to see the quick ball discarding that origin form Palkia V-Star for -ba -ba -ba, the Articuno. <laughs> Um, I'm digging the sound effects this round. Definitely <laughs> had a very strong round in, in that aspect. But yeah, the, the Raihan there is a very strong grab uh, with the Shady Dealings. Just being able to get yep. that energy accelerated. You don't have to work in that Palkia V because we understand that that's easy two prize cards for Ian mm -hmm. to grab at any point with the boss's orders or Serena and going to work in the Articuno. Understanding that you're not always going to be able to, uh, to keep the paralysis down, but at least you force Ian to evolve. Absolutely. I remember when the Articuno first came in onto the scene, it was so awesome using that emergency jelly to kind of heal because, of course, it does do 50 damage to itself off of its wild freeze. But you're also paralyzing Beautiful. your Sorry. opponent, which is huge. <laughs> I know that that's worth it, Kyle, worth it. Yep. I was wondering <laughs> if there was going to be a, an, an additional Drizzile there, and sure enough, there is for the escape rope. Nice. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and let the let this out. There's no Pokemon that's evolving on the bench. Uh, and that's mm. when you do get the, uh, the paralysis to stick. Oh, absolutely. That is going to be awesome here. Yeah, of course. I mean, I guess just to clarify, when you evolve, it gets rid of uh, status conditions. But if you don't have a Pokemon to evolve into, like that Raikou, there's no evolution to that there. So it is currently stuck in the active position as of now with paralysis. So that Articuno doing not only 70 damage, but some paralysis action here. So Ian is going to have to respond to this now. Otherwise, the entire strategy is going to be very slowed down, and Piper is just going to start taking these prize cards one by one. Of course, Ian leading as of now in the prize cards, knocking out that early Sobble. But hey, there's still a lot of game to go here. We're going to see a capture energy now from Ian. Let's see what is grabbed out of there. Of course, we saw the fail on the first capture energy, but now maybe Ian's like, all right, let's maybe fill up this uh, bench spot, or maybe not. Yeah, I was thinking we just fail again. <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> know if there's a, a Pokemon you look. really want to play down at this stage. Yeah. And the only thing that Ian's really worried about this turn is something that Piper set up beautifully. Two Drizzile I on the bench means know, that there's an opportunity for the quick shooting Inteleon, perhaps, to get yeah. down onto one of them, use that scoop up net, play it again, you knock out this Raikou V without ever attacking, and then you line up that paralysis once more. Absolutely. Well, the first one we're going to see is Shady Dealing. Piper does play one copy of that Shady Dealings and Teleon as well. So searching out two cards. It was that Evolution Incense and the Hisuian Heavy Ball to get an Articuno out of the prize cards as well. So Shady Dealings for now, but there is still an open Drizzile for that quick shooting, which would be huge here, just stacking up the damage over time. A very traditional line of the two quick shooting, one Shady Dealings and Teleon Piper is comfortable with this deck for sure. Yeah, going for the, the Articuno there, and uh, it, it just looks like Piper wasn't able to, to make that play happen. She needed to yeah. find some additional cards with the Inteleon Shady Dealings. And uh, this is going to work out fine, too. You're going to lose this Articuno in the process, but it's already got 100 damage on it. You don't need to work in the, uh, the Emergency Jelly now. And yep. uh, you can have that second Articuno ready to go. And she's thinking about <laughs> that with these energies now. Yep, Capacious Bucket, such a nice card, searching that out. And then, oh my goodness, here we go, some more trainer cards here. Ooh, well, there's the Emergency Jelly being brought to the top here. That's going to be one of them 
uh, drawn out here off that Shady Dealings. Inteleon just deciding on the second. Looks like it's going to be the scoop up net here, though, for Piper. Scoop up net so essential here in Piper's deck because, as you can see, the Sobbles into the Drizzile into the Inteleon, but then you can just chain those per turn if you have that scoop up net and you continuously lay down those Pokemon to be able to evolve. That Emergency Jelly's coming into play, Kyle. Yeah, we're going to see it down early here and uh, looks like we're going to still see the knockout there, but this still leads into, oh, this is perfect, has the boss's orders and is going to have plenty of time oh to goodness. work on this Very Lugia. Nice. And that's great because you already have the damage on the Raikou. You don't really want to cash in on that right now. If yeah. you can knock out that Pokemon with quick shootings along the way, that's a, that's a great way to handle this. And you already know you have guaranteed three turns of this uh, Wild Freeze on this Lugia V now. That's, that's exactly where you want to be. So what are the cards in Ian's deck as far as saviors? Oh, from let this me position? let me go ahead and enlighten you. <laughs> there are zero. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> there's no bird keeper, there's uh there's no escape ropes, no nope. switches. Oh, that is rough. And that is unfortunately the uh, situation you find yourself in when you go against this powerful Articuno deck here. Piper just being passed right back to running away with this. This is such a familiar sight to see. Uh, usually it's with Piper piloting control, I feel like, but here we go. This is absolutely bananas here. I guess, I mean, this is kind of some sort of control. I suppose Ian can't do anything. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you think about the, each of these bosses' orders is another two turns where Ian isn't allowed to do anything. Because yeah. every time you're dealing 70 damage, perhaps you bring up with this Archeops eventually before mm -hmm. you knock out the, the Lugia V-Star. That's another two turns because that Pokemon has 150 hit yeah. points. And then you're just always buying those additional turns. And then she can just choose when to take the knockouts with quick shooting. Absolutely. And that's what we're about to see here as far as the Inteleon coming down. That is the quick shooting Inteleon which allows you to place two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Can be any of them per turn. So that's just going to be reused over and over and over again. Uh, that emergency jelly saved the Articuno that is still in the active, and there's already a powered up Articuno ready to go on the bench as well. And the thing is, Ian couldn't even not evolve the V-Star because that's how you get the Archeops out. So it's not like there was really a choice there. Ian isn't necessarily doing anything wrong. It's just not a very good matchup if you get stuck in this position here. Yeah. So, yeah. This, this Lugia yeah, no. didn't have a chance. <laughs> it no. had to come out so that we could see the Archeops and get the game plan rolling, take that opening knockout. But this has been such a strong start here from yeah. Piper, really showing some expertise as she's moving about the matchup and getting the damage down there because we saw that quick shooting onto the active. Uh, she probably is going to be able to line up the knockout uh, with the quick shooting, and then another Pokemon will be promoted. And Ian will be taking prize cards, yeah. but it's only when Articuno knocks itself out. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. So that first Primal Turbo, though, here for Ian, going on to an Archeops. An Archeops can be an attacker, and a good one at that in this deck. So just prepping the upcoming turns. What do you think is Ian's strategy from this point on, Kyle? Well, he's, he's hoping that Piper does miss at some opportunity. You need a, a spot where you're not uh, paralyzed in order to take a knockout. And you kind of just wait, hoping that eventually your opponent overplays with yeah. these Inteleons, has them uh, all in play, and then maybe you have an opportunity to Marnie them to a hand where they just don't have any more options mm. to use boss's orders. So even if Ian does find a way to disrupt the hand, expect him to hold it for that opportune time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, <laughs> Piper, I'll say, Kyle, it's pretty nice to see a lot of blue out on the field again. I feel like we haven't seen this in a while. That's two quick shooting Inteleon now in play here. So that is going to be 40 damage counters being placed uh, uh, between both of them here. And it is just the slow grind, the paralysis into so much damage here now. Uh, that's a lot of dice there on that Lugia V-Star still stuck in the active. Of course, the Articuno does have to take 50 damage itself as well. But that's when you just come in with the emergency jelly. Kyle, is there any point in your life where you needed some emergency jelly? Yeah, I've, uh, I've been stuck <laughs> with a peanut butter sandwich. And I just, oh, <laughs> what am I going to do here? I'm stuck. But no, <laughs> thankfully, I, I broke the glass and I found my way out. <laughs> That's what Articuno is doing, cooking up the PBJs here today. All right, I think it was literally just a pass back, Ian, not able to do anything here. And that is finally going to be the knockout on that Lugia V-Star uh, from Piper's side. But, of course, it was off of the quick shooting, which, is, which means the Articuno is still in the active here. It's still Piper's turn. 
gets to also take two prize cards here, and Ian has to choose who to promote. Luckily for this Lugia V, it has not been evolved yet. So if it does get that evolution, then we're going to see the status condition go away, and at least Ian can make some moves over here on that side of the field. Yeah, this is what Ian's been waiting for. We also saw that Cape of Toughness, which is not a card to do, that you usually expect to see in the Lugia builds, but he's holding on to that to uh, maybe get some additional use out of that uh, amazing rare Raikou on the bench. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here we go. Piper. Um, we saw the, what did we see here? Boss's orders. The boss's orders after the evolution incense as well. We did see the Hisuian heavy ball again earlier in the turn, but yeah, that's just going to be another boss turn. This is the huge here that we're seeing. So of course, utilizing all those quick shootings as well. That's where you see that dice coming down onto that Lugia V. Wow. But it's just going to be the Cape of Toughness on Piper's side here, saving the Articuno. Not even saving it with the jelly here. It's just got a cape on it, taking another 50 damage and sticking that Archeops in the active spot. So Piper is uh, no stranger to the strats here. And even now, I mean, the Radiant Greninja is in the hand off Ooh. of that Hisuian Heavy Ball as well. So Lost there's some... vacuum here. That's great. You <laughs> oh, actually get to steal out. the knockout. Nice. That's that a great find fantastic. from Ian. And that's that's the difference in Piper's list. She only has that one emergency jelly and the, the one cape, I believe. And yeah. uh, sure enough, when you t run out of the jelly, I mean, that's it. You're stuck with just the mm -hmm. cape of toughness. And that's a, a little bit of a weakness point here that Ian was able to take advantage of. Uh, not going to yeah. be able to do much with it, but prize cards are cool. Prize cards are definitely cool because that's going to tie it up between our players now. Four to four here between them. And of course, if Piper can't keep up that paralysis, then uh, there's an opportunity there for Ian to strike here. So we only have 70 damage here on the Archeops as of now. 150 HP on that Archeops total. Um, and yeah, let's see what Piper does with the rest of this turn here. We're going to do the quick ball here. Easy discard there with that Drapion. And ooh, here we go. A Palkia V is going to come out, but will it come down to the bench? Yeah, I, this might be the opportunity where you could you could place down the Palkia V. You're obviously going to have your opponent locked mm -hmm. in the paralysis uh, with this turn here. Ian really wishing that his uh, Pokemon had 140 hit points because he'd <laughs> rather just lose the bird at this point. Uh, yeah, I know, right? It's almost an even worse position to be in because each turn that Piper gets to uh, just stack these damage counters with the quick shooting, that's more and more damage being stacked up and you're just stuck in a position you can't get out of if you have no pivot card. That's exactly what Piper is doing here. Just sticking in Archeops, paralyzing it, making sure to turn that card there to, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to signal that it is in the paralysis position as of now. And, you know, for anybody unfamiliar, you can't hard retreat out of a paralysis, as you could probably tell. You can try. Um, <laughs> you it's can not going to work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You do need some sort of trainer card to help you out with that. So, you know, as we've seen in our Lugia list, there's Bird Keeper um, that a lot of people have chosen to cut recently, and Ian is just one of those people. You know, I think Andrew Hedrick, though, who is on that crazy run, has a Bird Keeper, right? Um, I think there's one Bird Keeper. Yeah, I mean, Bird Keeper we've, we've seen as a, a very strong inclusion, especially in the earlier stages of the regionals run. We mm -hmm. saw players using Espeon VMAX to avoid uh, paralysis yes. shenanigans. Yeah. And uh, Lugia was doing very well in this matchup back <laughs> then, but Ian does not, not have the resources there for this. And we, we've seen Piper with this strategy just yeah. adding all the damage onto that Lugia V. We're getting to a point where if she has one more boss mm -hmm. uh, this crucial turn, that she's going to be able to get enough damage onto that Lugia V where Ian might have to think about evolving before the paralysis. Has the Pal Pad already been played? I think it was played earlier, yes. right, Kyle? Yeah. So I think there's one more boss left, unless, unless yeah. the prizes have anything to say about it. Oh, was that it off the top? I'm not or was sure that if that a different was supporter? Oh, yeah, it may have been Raihan. Oh, um, is that the boss? That the I think prizes? she just found it off the prizes. <laughs> Wait, let me take a look yeah. here. Oh, yep, it is. That, that was that that's was sickening. Oh my gosh! Yeah, wow. Yeah, because the the prize cards were shuffled around a Ooh. couple of times there uh, from the Hisuian Heavy Ball, and that is just going to be a boss off the prizes into another stall here from Piper Lapine. Oh my goodness. 
That's not a hot chicken anymore. That is a cold chicken. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> we're getting very close to GG at this yeah. point. Articuno will knock itself out next turn, get the Archeops to a point where it's stuck with 140 on it. And then Piper can just take the knockout with quick shooting. And mm -hmm. this Palkia V-Star is going to be able to knock out anything on the other side of the board. Yeah, you got to think, too. I mean, Piper, we saw start with that Sobble into the Keep Calling. And that just seemed to establish such a powerful board state for her. You know, so I feel like going into another game, if that happens again, I, what do you even do as Ian? You just live off a hope and a dream? You do the exact same thing you did last time. You got that Lugia V. You hope to take more than one prize card. <laughs> yeah. And maybe <laughs> you put more pressure on these Sobbles. If you can remove two Sobbles from play, then maybe you're in a different strat yeah, a different line true. because she's just able to manipulate this and use so many mm -hmm. shady dealings to get this set up. Absolutely. So here we go. We're just seeing the same strategy as of now play out. That Articuno ticking up 70 damage each turn while also taking 50 <laughs> to itself, but also activating that paralysis here. Piper Lapine on the other side here, using that Irida, grabbing a water Pokemon and an item card here. And that water yeah, Pokemon she almost got discarded. Evolved the discard pile. That was cool. <laughs> Almost got discarded there, but hopped out of there real quick into that origin form. Palkia Visar here that is now on the bench and it has two energy already attached to it. So it's ready to go. Crack a lacking with that sub space swell here, Kyle. And Kyle, I just got to say, uh, that <laughs> looks a little bit more like a horse Pokemon than yeah, a Jolteon yeah, does. This, this is the real <laughs> giddy up of the meta. <laughs> Oh, here we go. So we're going to see that quick shooting ticking up another two damage counters onto that Raikou on the bench. And uh, the damage is stacking up here. I got to say, of course, that Articuno is going to be knocked out itself now after enacting that 70 damage onto the Archeops, knocking itself out. So Ian does get to take a prize card off of that, going down to three, tying it up between these players. Manaphy is going to be in the active here. But again, that Archeops is stuck as of now in that paralysis state. Yep, and uh, Piper is trying to set up uh, a game ending play here with the damage on the Raikou. Maybe there's an opportunity where uh, you're able to knock out this Archeops. If the Raikou is promoted, then you might have enough damage to even like mm -hmm. work in a rain splash or something. Just anything where you can attack with a single prize uh, Pokemon. But uh, she's used so many energies to get to this point too. Uh, obviously, the only thing that Ian's looking to do here is avoid having a V Pokemon in the active spot, as Piper yeah. would just need those remaining two prizes after the Archeops is knocked out. Yeah, it's honestly pretty funny to see that the, the Cape of Toughness is, like, really the only thing keeping that Raikou alive right now. <laughs> he looks good. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, we saw it on the Articuno as well. The Cape fell and the Articuno fell out of the sky sort of situation there, too. But here we go. Radiant Charizard coming down on Ian Buck's side of the field. Yep, just understands that these single prize Pokemon are probably gonna have to help pave the way to victory. Yeah. You're gonna need all the hit points you can and you need to avoid giving Piper these easy two prize cards. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be a powerful energy sought out of the deck here. And then also, I mean, the choice belt is on there, that Lugia V as well. That's gonna be a manual attachment there of another powerful energy. So Primal Turbo has been used and a manual attachment for the turn. That has a lot of energy there on that Lukia V, but it has been uh, getting powered up over time here. So that's going to be a lot of damage as well that it's doing, especially with that choice belt, at least uh, on the V star on Piper's side. And here we go. Knockout here off of the quick shooting on that Archeops. Only two prize cards left for Piper to take. Training Court's going to come out. Uh, into the field here, allowing Piper to grab an energy from the discard pile, retreat that mana fee off of that energy into the origin form Palkia V-Star. Oh, and here we go. That uh, V-Star power. I think power. she has a Thornton play potentially lined up too. We'll, we'll see what's, what's going on with that. We did see the star portal there, grabbing all those other energy out of the discard pile onto the benched origin form Palkia V down to one prize card now, knocking out that Radiant Charizard. Ian Buck is not stuck in a paralysis state here, so let's see if uh, we could save it, but there's still three prize cards left for Ian to take. Yeah, even if... Uh, only one for Piper. Yeah, Piper's just looking for a single knockout here at this stage, and Ian needs to get take three prize cards, which is not going to happen with the, yeah. the Mana in play. So... Nope. It, the fact that Piper has two Pokemon that are able to deal at least 200 damage with that Palkia V being able to just turbo break, 
means that Ian has to find a brand new Pokemon to work in. I think Stoutland V is the only one we could really realistically get in there, and uh, yeah. it doesn't. It's not going to line up. Absolutely, they're they're checking out the math here, but it's it doesn't. I don't even think it took a knockout there. Ian's just going to scoop it up here. So Piper Lapine taking our game one here in our Swiss round 13. Phenomenal play. I mean, we just saw her work her way straight up into that checkmate position and just took it home. Yeah, this is almost more of a control deck than her Mewtwo V Union. I was about to say <laughs> this, that actually. This is, this is uh, <laughs> so cool to watch. Just taking this deck that. Obviously, we've seen it as one of the most aggressive decks in the format, uh, the previous format that we had um, with uh, even Isaiah Bradner playing this list, so many people on the Palkia. Instead now, it's just used as a utility card, get some additional energies down into play every once in a while. Yeah. And it's all about the, uh, the Articuno this time. Well, and you gotta think too, going into a match with a Lugia, you, you hope that they don't have the outs and you execute your, your plan of action, your strategy there. Uh, but I mean, in that game, Ian didn't play a single out there. So that's pretty telling. I mean, besides the loss of vacuum, that is now knowledge that Piper has from the deck. And of course, that Cape of Toughness too, which is a bit of an oddball card from the Lugia V-Star deck. But yeah, Piper has all this knowledge now going into this game too. So as long as it's a strong start, the strategies from both these players should just get better in theory. But unfortunately, Ian just doesn't have enough answers to this as long as there's a good enough setup here from Piper's side of the field. Yeah, I don't think Ian's strategy gets any better. He did exactly what he wanted Ooh. to do. This is probably oh. a part of his strategy. He what needs the? double boss oh prized along with a Sobble and one of the Articunos. <laughs> Uh, the Hisuian Heavy Ball can't search out people, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> yeah, that would for sure. I'd be uh, grabbing that boss. Uh, I'd play four. <laughs> I, I know, right? <laughs> exactly. That'd be pretty wild. But yeah, that is tough. Not only the Pokemon that we saw there uh, on Piper's side of the prize cards, but two bosses order. That is, uh, that's pretty tough here because we saw how pivotal that was there in Piper's last game plan. And here we go on Ian's side of the field, uh, that Lugia V-Star. Yeah, that's definitely gonna be awkward oh, for Ian. Oh, there's only two in the deck. Because, yeah, you're looking to use this Lugia often to get both down and of course attack with the basic first and then evolve. But you probably evolved the one on your bench because that's how you summoning starred. Yeah. So Ian's not going to have that luxury to work with this time around. Mm -hmm. But I think Piper's a little more frustrated once she gets to see the opening here. Yeah, that is that is going to be interesting for both of these players to find out here. I'm sure once they get to look through their decks. But here we go on Ian's side of the field. It was just a quick ball uh, discarding that Archaeops. We saw the powerful energy be attached to that Lugia V. Um, and then we're just pi uh, passing over to Piper's turn. So this is going to be exactly the same as as far as uh, the setup we saw last time. Starting with that Irida, you get a Pokemon, water Pokemon, and an item card out of the deck. Yep. Hello, Manaphy, our good old friend. But it's going <laughs> to yes, be minus exactly. one Sobble this time with that other in the prize cards. Yep. Yeah, so definitely identifying that real early here. So Manaphy is so crucial to come out as early as possible, and Irida is a fantastic way to get that. Just so smooth, this deck specifically going second. You have so many outs to this thing, and also being able to utilize that keep calling is huge. Like we said, one less Sobble on Piper's side, so we'll see if that hinders the setup um, pretty critically here. I mean, we saw so many chains of the Drizzile, the scoop up now. We saw like multiple shady dealings in one turn off of that Inteleon. So uh, yeah, you're, you're a little slim on space here on Piper's side, but yeah. you know, there's always that history and heavy ball. And when we were talking about setups and how Ian potentially wins a match like this, it involves taking out one of those Sobbles. And if you can get both of them two down, it's really hard to chain together all the pieces. So sure enough, with one in the prizes and one uh, probably knocked out this turn if we can find that one Lugia V star still remaining in the deck. Mm -hmm. Then Ian's going to be in a great spot where he can knock out all of these. And he's not going to have to worry about boss's orders because those aren't there either. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even just to mention the Articunos in the prize cards too, there's only oh. two in deck for Piper. I think he missed. What? He has the, uh, the, the Orangaroo to try to grab one more card. He could thin down potentially. He has. A capture energy, but you don't want to play that with the Arch the uh, the Archaeops. Oh, here we go, the Primate Wisdom. Oh, finds uh, a quick ball. Oh, 
no, Ian. <laughs> oh, no. It's does, just going to be a capture energy. Does he even have Archeops in the discard pile? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We saw, I don't know if there's two, but we saw at least one hit yeah, the discard I, pile early. This, this is the matchup where you only need one. But, yeah. But this is... Missing the Lugias, that's not good, because you're, you're going to open up this window for mm -hmm. uh, Piper to be able to use all of these Sobbles and maybe protect one of oh, those, get this to no, the bench. no, no, no. Yeah, that is not a good position. I mean, we do know one Lugia star is in the prize uh, cards, but still not even hitting, you know, an incense and out to the V-Star or Ultra Ball, anything, really. That is really tough here on Ian's side. So not the best start here from Ian. Piper having a lot of issues with the prize cards, but still at least able to set up here. We're going to see another Irida come down onto the field. Right now we're seeing the Drizzile um, here. And well, the after the Irida, of course. Yeah, yeah. This, this is something that we didn't get to see because of the Radiant Greninja prized the first game around. And there will be the bench space available without the Force Oval. Yeah. So definitely some options there to draw in some additional cards with concealed cards. Yeah. And uh, this Pokemon is also a pretty decent attacker, too. We've seen this That's true. As, a, as a great way to, to open up the game against the Lugia players. You get that additional damage down mm -hmm. and so maybe soften up some of those Lugias and you don't have to worry about uh, chaining together so many Articunos. Yep, that's going to be huge. So Radiant Greninja going to see a lot of utility here. That is one Pokemon not stuck. Uh, all right, we're going to see the level ball here. Any Pokemon that is 90 HP or less being sought out of the deck. But, of course, Piper also just looking at the cards in deck for the, the later strategies. Piper is just one of those players that uh, I think is planning. I guess you get like this when you, uh, you know, play control, but you got to plan pretty much 20 turns ahead. <laughs> yes, this is, this is chess, not checkers. Yeah. Lugia, Lugia likes checkers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, Kyle. I love it. All right, here we go. Into another Drizzile here. Uh, things are happening so fast, but, I mean, we just saw it already played out in Piper's mind, and it is coming to fruition now. We saw the Pacious Bucket, the Energy come out. We're seeing the Quick Ball and the Battle VIP Pass to get that Origin Form Palkia V down. Piper is playing at lightning speed. Yep, this is an opportunity to play down this Palkia V. Your, your opponent had a slower start, obviously did not get that Lugia V-Star. And for your opponent to have all of the pieces to grab the Lugia V-Star and a boss's orders in the same turn, it's just very unrealistic, as they're probably going to yeah. have to use a draw supporter to find the Lugia V-Star. Absolutely. So here we go. Origin form Palkia V being the attachment here, manual attachment for turn. We're just seeing the established board here from Piper, but lacking that Articuno this time around. But here we go, Ian Buck off of just not the best start here. Let's see if this turn can somewhat save things. Starting off with a quick ball, discarding that Archeops into the discard pile. So there's at least two in there now, just looking through the deck here at the Pokemon. Yep, there's an opportunity to thin a little bit if you want to yeah. maybe use uh, a supporter like... Uh, Professor's research this turn, or if you think if your opponent has a lot of cards, you can grab that Marnie. But yeah, grabbing the uh, the Drapion V, discarding that quickly, mm -hmm. and maybe uh, maybe Ian thinks that this Stoutland's not going to be able to do much either this game. Yep, just taking that Stoutland off off of another quick ball. Luminion was already in the hand, so it's going to come down to the bench, searching out a supporter card. Looks like it's going to be the Marnie here. It's a pretty uh, solid card for this matchup. I mean, Piper, as we saw in the last game, just had a ton of cards saved up in the hand, so at least there will be a little disruption there if Ian does uh, play that for this turn. I think just deciding after here, or trying to figure out if if uh, he already attached for the turn, but did not, just gonna do a capture energy, not gonna search anything out off of it, just shuffling up the deck here. Yep, nice thought here to uh, grab that Stoutland V and then place that onto the bottom of the deck. You don't mm -hmm. wanna see that uh, that this stage of the match, maybe you can work that in and get the double dip fangs on a Pokemon like that Manaphy in the mid stage of the game, or who knows. But at this stage, Ian's thinking one thing only. He needs to evolve, and he found it. <gasps> found it off of the Marnie. Here we go into a fresh five cards from the Marnie. Piper only getting four for the hands. But yeah, drew straight into that Lugia V-Star. So here we go. We're going to see the evolution into that V-Star at this point in time. Already has the Choice Belt attached, a Powerful Energy and a Capture Energy. So two energy on there. We already see the Pivot there on that Dunsparce that's in the active position on Ian's side too, having an energy attached. Ian blinks in the game of chicken and evolves the one with the energies. 
He's not going to try to work in the Lugia V as an attacker this game because he sees the Palkia V on the bench, understanding yeah. that Palkia V stars waiting and could easily take a knockout on that Pokemon with just 220 hit points. Yeah, things are definitely looking a little bit different here for both of our players from our game one, which is very spicy to see. But uh, here we go. We are seeing that summoning star to get that one Archaeops, like you said, Kyle. Really only one is required here for this matchup. I mean, Ian's been manual, manually attaching so many times uh, here. So we're going to just get that Primal Turbo, grabbing a couple of double turbo energy from the deck. One is going to come down onto that Lugia V-Star. Yeah, I was just thinking of which energies he can uh, forego in this time. And the yeah. double turbo is going to prove to be a very important card. So just identifying that he does have both in the deck and he's going to have that resource later on is going to be important. Helping him reach for some of those three uh, three energy attacks. Doesn't have to guarantee the energy from hand and can just use that straight from the Archaeops. Absolutely, and that led to a knockout there on that Radiant Greninja. So one prize card here for Ian. And then we're back over to Piper's turn. Of course, that knockout activates a Raihan. So Piper is able to attach an energy from the discard pile to a Pokemon and then search through the deck for any single card, which is very nice for this turn. And it was going to be that Inteleon searched out of the deck here, played right away to start that quick shooting, stacking the damage here. And we're just going to see the scoop up net. So both the Sobble, Drizzle, and the Inteleon are coming back up after being utilized here and going straight back into another Drizzle evolution, into that evolution incense for what we needed to see there, that origin form Palkia V-Star. Yeah, we'll see if the energies are used this turn around with the uh, the ability there, but we do see the second Palkia V, so maybe not as yeah. much of a rush to do that. The main thing you had to do this turn was get enough Pokemon onto the field to deal 260 damage, and that is lined up perfectly, giving Piper this ability to place two damage Here on the Lugia V also. Absolutely, full benches on both sides of the field. So that is going to be enough damage to take that knockout. Two prize cards, Lugia V stars now out of play on Ian's side, and so is all that energy. So we saw Ian earlier looking, counting up the energy. It's so essential to kind of keep track where your energy is at, how many you have left in deck, how many are in the prize cards, how many are discarded. A lot were discarded there, but as we know from Lugia V decks, uh, they play a lot of energy, so we're going to see two more come down off that Primal Turbo and a single attachment for turn as well. Loading up this Lugia V-Star to be prepared to attack back into this origin form, Palkia V-Star. Yeah, really hoping that this V-Guard energy can help maybe uh, avoid some additional damage this turn, but has to bench with the capture energy, the Radiant Charizard, which is going to give Piper 20 more damage, and that might be the window that she needed, as she already has that Drizzile down and has the Inteleon with Quick Shooting, too. Absolutely. These Quick Shootings really stack up here. All right, so we're going to see the hit here off of that Lugia V-Star, but it is not a knockout there on that origin form Palkia V-Star. So Piper's Palkia is going to live another day. The horses ride on here, Kyle, and we're going to see another one come out of the, uh, the hand to evolve onto the bench as well. There we're seeing the quick shooting to get that math lined up here. Onto that Lugia V Star. And that's enough. It's, yeah. uh, right now, Palkia is dealing 230 with the V Guard, and that's going to be a knockout. So, only needed the two quick shootings because of the Radiant Charizard okay. bench. And yeah. that means that Piper didn't have to go digging, perhaps, for a card like a, like a choice belt in that situation. Yeah, I mean. Not it, even a card in the list. So, yep. <laughs> that's, uh, there you that, go. That's, uh, that, <laughs> that means the Radiant that Charizard is the only reason that this Palkia was able to take the knockout. <laughs> oh, wow. That is. Pretty wild here, but yeah, I mean, you see the power of just having those Drizzle ready, open to be evolved, but it's also just an awkward position because you can't really take them out because you got to take as many prize cards as you can uh, and look at the the danger levels on the field from your opponent as well. So Ian is just kind of stuck here having to let Piper run away with this game as far as just getting to the damage needed, getting to the item cards or trainer cards needed, that Evolution Incense coming out of the deck here now, and that's going to be the knock here. Like you said, Kyle, perfect math, taking out that Lugia V-Star. Piper Lapine going down to two prize cards here. Those last two is just a Sobble and a Drizzile. Let's see what Ian Buck does with this turn, at least start, starting with attaching that Heat Fire Energy onto the Radiant Charizard. 
Yeah, some additional hit points into some water Pokemon are going to be wildly irrelevant. But hey, we got a knockout lined up, and that's what Ian's been looking for for a while. Some prize cards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get down to three prize cards after uh, likely knocking out this Palkia V-Star. It just needs to start finding some more resources, so yeah. the professor's research is going to be a good choice. Absolutely, Professor's Research, fantastic choice here, discarding into a fresh seven cards. Uh, Origin form, Palkia V-Star, oh going boy. down, and here we go. Is there Two a boss for the Luminion? Oh! <laughs> there it That's is. It. That is a great way to clean up here. And we said the Piper was playing control, but uh, that was definitely the, no uh, the fastest game of control I've ever witnessed. Yeah, that was, uh, I mean, if the if the control is just absolutely playing flawlessly, being an incredible, skillful player here, operating your deck at the highest capability, Piper was definitely playing that game here and just came out absolutely on top. You can just see, uh, you know, at the conclusion of that game, how hyped she is, I'm sure, to be taking this because you want to go as far as you can into this day two and hopefully into a top eight position. Yep, and she's definitely lined up to do just that. What a what a great win to have on stream, showing off the uh, the versatility of this deck, the yeah. opportunity to uh, play very slow, use the Articuno what eight eight times, yeah. nine times with the Wild Freeze, it and then sure enough, just prize cards were flying left and right in game number two. Pretty sad we didn't get to see the crab. I know, I was a little sad about that too, because uh, yeah, the, the crab is always my fan favorite for sure. But hey, I mean, we saw some great.